What is the difference between a lead magnet and a reader magnet? In this video, we're going to discuss the nuances and differences depending on who you are and what you're trying to do. Okay, so let's get right into it. When I first started this journey on how to create the best science fiction fantasy reader magnet for my audience, I went down this rabbit hole of information and it talked about lead magnets and book funnels and click funnels and squeeze pages and hug pages and cookies and all these things. And while I had a pretty good grasp of what they were talking about, I actually come from a bit of a business background. I won an award for entrepreneurship in 2018. I didn't realize that I was listening to two main groups kind of talking past themselves when it came to all this terminology. So what the terms meant to one group meant a completely different thing than what they meant to another group. And in order for you to avoid the same confusion that I had, I'm creating this video to kind of clear things up. So first let's talk about what are those, those two main groups. On one hand, you have traditional business and marketing where a lot of these terms originally came from terms like lead magnet click funnels book funnels and reader magnets and then on the other hand you have the more niche down industry of independent book publishers who use similar terminology such as lead magnets and reader magnets and book funnel but it means a completely different thing than what, what this industry is talking about. Even though they, they took a lot of the terminology from, from that industry. So that's what we're here to talk about. And what you have to realize is that at the end of the day, these two groups are selling basically entirely different things. Okay? And let's, let's kind of clear that up. So... We're lumping a lot of industries into the business and marketing uh, group. Let's just say everybody who is not an independent publisher of commercial fiction, it probably falls into this group here of the other businesses, meaning that they're selling products, services, or um, products, services, or items that that uh, are usually uh, more money than a book would cost. Like, I'll give you an example. Somebody who's a cleaning service might sell their service for $50 a week. And I don't know, maybe it's $100 a week, okay? That's wildly different than a, an author who's selling their book for $5 per book, okay? Now that cleaning service may have a product that is, we'll say, um, you know, a, a cleaning pad that you can buy a pack of them for 10 bucks. Now that's closer to what the, the author is selling and maybe those cleaning pads are like an upsell, okay? That's another word that both groups use. But the difference is, by and large, the people in this group are using their marketing efforts and their leads and all this stuff in order to convert customers to buy products that cost more than around two or three bucks, okay? And that means, that, and that, that's why there's such a big divide between the groups, because everybody else who's using this terminology, by and large, are using it to, to funnel people into business products and services that are that are more expensive than an author would. Now on the flip side, a, a business savvy author will have a backlist of several books, not just one book at 99 cents, because if, they, if that's all they're working with, it's very unlikely they're gonna make a lot of revenue or, or, or profit. And that's a discussion for a whole nother video, but the point is, is that these two groups are selling wildly different things. And while we can learn a lot from this group because they're selling high ticket items and things of that nature, 
that we still have to work within the confines of the products that we can sell as authors. Okay. And so the terminology is wildly different based on that. And the best, like a great example of this in real life would be, um, if you look at the tigers in, I believe Siberia, they're white tigers. Whereas if you look at tigers in other parts of the world, they're orange and they have black stripes versus white and black stripes. And it's because even though they're, they're descendants of kind of the same uh, genes, they're, they're also different because of the nuances of where they live. Okay. It's the same thing with our products, sorry, our products in this world versus their products. And so <clears throat> if you're someone here that's not planning on doing independent commercial fiction book publishing, but primarily science fiction and fantasy, then you should look for more videos that are, and I'm going to switch here, more videos like, like this that talk about lead magnets and, and things of that nature, but are geared towards mainly the marketing and industries that are not book publishing. But if you're here because you are a commercial fiction writer that sells science fiction or fantasy, or in it, for this video, I don't think it really matters, any kind of fiction, then you're going to want to be looking into this reader magnets, okay? And and the discussion we're about to have. Now, even within our community, there's a difference between a lead magnet and a reader magnet, okay? And the first I want to go back to the other community so that we can discuss the differences there and then explain how it works here. So, in in the business community, you'll have a lead magnet is something that someone gives, something that a business owner or a company will give to a prospective lead or a prospective client that they don't know, that knows nothing about them. They call that a cold lead. And usually it's something that they clearly would want and they give it to them for free. And all of us have been the the cold lead at some point in our lives usually when we're kids and we're at the grocery store and we're sitting there at the bakery and we see the little sign that says uh take one and it's a cookie okay bakeries are for years have been doing this lead strategy this lead magnet strategy of giving something for free something that somebody will want and get good emotions from and see the value in so that hopefully their customer will buy more of their products, okay? And so even though the kid who eats the cookie probably won't buy their products, though they may, it's probably the mom who you just helped out at the grocery store because now, now they've been given something good that they can use for the kid to buy more of your products. <coughs> the same idea happens with reader magnets. Um, now the difference is in that store example, and, and let's, let's use a, another one. One that you might see a lot in the business world is someone has a service on, we'll go back to cleaning. Okay. And what they might do is they might have a video just like this and say, um, here's the top three steps to cleaning your house. And then they, then they end the video and say, but if you want to know more about how to clean your house, we have a, a, a gift for you. You can get this um, list of 10 more steps that you could take to make your house cleaner. And when they go and they click on that list, which is another 10 items, they have to give their email address. And so that video list combo act as a lead magnet to warm people up from cold leads into warm leads and then eventually customers, buying customers. So as a author, you're doing the same thing, but you're using books as both your lead magnet and your reader magnet, 
Okay? And this is where the difference comes in. Your lead magnet is more like the cookie. I'm going to go back here. Okay? This is my lead magnet. This is my cookie that I give to people who have never read my stuff, who don't know anything about me. It's the, I, created, I created three prequel books that serve as reader magnets to my main series. This is book one. And I put it on Amazon, as I've mentioned before in other videos. <coughs> I put it on Amazon because Amazon has the majority of the traffic and the majority of the the industry, the market share for the ebook industry at this point in time. And so if you want to go fishing, you want to throw your net where the majority of the fish are. This is my net. And the fish are possible readers who don't know me yet. And and what I'm doing is I'm saying, here's my free cookie that you guys can try. It costs nothing to you. And my intent is only to entertain you and show you what I have to offer. And if they enjoy that free cookie, then what they do is at the end of this book, it gives them a link to click on this book, to, to download this book. It takes them to this page. And, and here's the difference. This is a reader magnet. Why is this a reader magnet? Well, because when they read my lead magnet, they didn't know me. But by the time they got to here, that means they read through the entire reader magnet. They liked what I, what I wrote. They saw that there was another thing that I was offering them. They clicked on it. It took them here. They saw this and they said, hey, I want to know more about this guy and his writing. And then they click on this and they give their email address. Now they are no longer a cold lead. Now they are a warm-ish lead and they are readers. So therefore, it is a reader magnet because now you truly have a reader. And <clears throat> at the end of this book, it funnels into more. You don't have to have that. You could just have one serve as both your lead magnet and your reader magnet. I'll talk about that in a second. But my point is, at the end, when, when your reader magnets are done, the point is for the, the link and all of your email efforts should go towards convincing the reader that they would enjoy the first book in your main series. That's your main product. If you're the cleaning company, your, your video and your list, those are just, those are just free gimmies. What you really want them to do is sign up for their cleaning service. As an author, what you really want them to do is sign up for your, for your, <clears throat> sorry, not sign up, purchase your main book or your, your main series, which for me is this one right here, Dreams in Ruin. Now this is book one, book two is coming out soon and then book three is coming out later this year. So by the time that those books are done this year, readers will have been able to get six books for roughly five bucks. And that's the kind of value that I'm giving to my readers, not to mention that on my newsletter, while, like, let's say they didn't go automatically here and buy this. That's fine, because they're on my newsletter now. And I know, just as well as, as it is for you, it is for me, oftentimes, we'll see something at a store, and we'll say, you know, I want to get that, but maybe later. And then we kind of forget about it. Well, imagine if you never went back to that store, or imagine if no one ever reminded you, and you did want that thing, but for whatever reason, you were too busy, you didn't have the money right now, you wanted to wait for it to be Halloween because you wanted to read a scary story at Halloween, whatever the case might be. Because you have their email, now, not only can you develop a relationship with them, but now you can use that relationship to remind them gently um, and that, that'll, that's a conversation for other videos, but you remind them that like, Hey, by the way, don't forget this book is out. Are you looking for a gift for friends and family for the, for Christmas? This book is out. Are you looking for a gift for birthday? This book is out. Are you looking for a book to read when you're, when you're out at the beach or when you're stuck in the snow? This book is out, right? There's so many reasons that you can remind them now. And over time, 
And and again, it's not just time and it's not just beating them overhead. Buy my book, buy my book, buy my book. If you're doing that, you're doing it wrong. But if you're constantly adding value in the newsletter, which we'll discuss in other videos, then it'll bring them to here. And then ultimately, you know, let's say you have a long backlist. My backlist for this particular series is small. Uh, right now, and it's literally just this book, but by the end of the year, it'll be three. But I have other books, like here, I'll show you. I have other books right here that I've written. And even though I'm just starting this newsletter for science fiction fantasy readers, ever since I started that newsletter, I have seen sales increased on these two books in particular. For whatever reason, my science fiction fantasy readers want to also read about these uh, about non these are nonfiction items, which tells me that they're, they're, they're probably authors as well. But aside from that, um, this is sold a couple more, but these books also my steampunk wars books increased in sales and I didn't do anything with them. I wasn't even marketing them, but that's the whole point. When you have a backlist and you have books that you've written, then it will, the newsletter strategy drives more people, not just to your main book series, but to your backlist. And that's the idea. And then the last thing I'll say is going forward, um, the, in the future, Amazon may not be the main place that you put your lead magnet. As, as we get into the blockchain and we get into NFTs and we get into virtual reality and whatever other technologies come out there, what we might find is that there's a new place where market share is to be found and had and there's a new fishing hole, so to speak. And when that happens, you want to be you want to have stuff like this that you can easily transfer over to the new thing so that you can start driving traffic from there and, and getting uh, contacts from there. And then also over time, let's say, you know, let's say you're like me and you're, you're in, you're in your forties. Okay. I just turned 40 this year. <clears throat> well, last year I'm about to turn 41, but, uh, if you just, if you're in your forties or your thirties, you still have decades of writing ahead of you as long as you continue to do this. So in 10, 20, 30 years, how many books are you going to have in your backlist? If you continue this strategy, which will work no matter, no matter uh, what technology does, this strategy will work because all you, it's the same thing as the cookie in the grocery store that's worked for decades. Why? People love things that are free. People love to see value. Okay? So as long as you can add that, you'll be able to capitalize on this for decades and decades to come. And then um, over time you'll see your sales start to increase from your other backlist. Like, let's say I finish this <coughs> Realm War series in the next decade or two, because I do have several books planned for it. Then whatever series I come out with after that, let's say there's 20 books in the Realm War series, then that new series is going to drive traffic to all the books that are in this backlist and then vice versa. All the people who read Realm Wars who liked it and like my writing style, well, not all of them, but a good majority of them will likely follow me to another book series as long as it's in the same genre or close to. So for example, the reason why this, this book mini series, this mini series on reader magnets is, is, labeled science fiction and fantasy is because I believe that most of your science fiction readers will transfer over to your fantasy stuff and vice versa. Not all of them. That's not what I'm saying, but most of them, because those two groups read quite a bit in the, in the, uh, like of each other. Um, and like I said, I even found that people who have, uh, read this book end up buying these books and steampunk is, is still part of the science fiction genre, but it's it's way wildly different from space opera action adventure. And so, and yet I still find readers 
buying those two. So my point is that um, y- your backlist will start complementing each other. And there are actually, um, in 20 books to 50K, I can't remember who it was, but in I, I sent you guys the resources in another video. But there's a, there was a really good presentation on how to get box sets and, and backlists to each point at each other. So they're all evergreen. So that if somebody finishes this series, let's say this was the Realm War series, and then the next series is your Epic Fantasy, that points to that. And then if somebody finishes your Epic Fantasy, it points to your Steampunk. And they keep pointing to each other so that someone is always stuck in this evergreen loop of... <clears throat> all the books that you've ever created. Anyways, uh, I think that about covers it. I think you have a good understanding now the difference between a lead magnet and a reader magnet when it comes to not just the business marketing world, but also when it comes to our specific uh, industry. And then the last thing I'll lead you with, leave you with is if you just type in reader magnet, You'll see a lot of this to me, like as I'm looking, oh wow, even my thing came up. I didn't even expect that. But a lot of this stuff that's coming up right now, this is relevant to people who are in our industry. If you're looking for how to do lead magnets for business stuff, maybe you are, or maybe you're not, but, but like what you don't want to do is type in lead magnet because lead magnet, as you can see, is going to bring up all of these business ideas. And then the last thing I'll say is even with, um, here, let's see what comes up for book funnel. Okay. Uh, yeah, all right. So it's, it's, a, it's a mix. And this is what I thought would happen. So... Book funnel is another one of those words that's like lead magnets and reader magnets that gets confused between the industries. And I'll tell you, I went on this whole rabbit hole in 2018, 2019, where I went, this, this guy right here who's, who's pictured in the green here, that's Frank Kern. He's a high-level marketer in the business industry. And don't get me wrong. I, I signed up for it. It, it. it was a whole book funnel uh, marketing strategy. But I thought it was for our industry. But it was for the other industries. And while I learned a lot of valuable lessons about copywriting and, and marketing and stuff, it was not germane to what I really needed, which was book funnel for um, for for what we do. And so... This is another key thing that you have to remember. When you type in book funnel, you want to type it in all one word. And let's see if those marketing things come up anymore. It doesn't, it doesn't look like it, but you have to be very careful. If the person doesn't sound like they're talking about indie publishing or commercial fiction, then they're probably not talking about the book funnel that you're thinking of. They're thinking about the book funnels that, that the, the wider industry in marketing uses, um, which is to use a book to funnel people into their sales process. That is not what we do. I mean, in some ways it is what we do, but we have a much more sophisticated, niched down, nuanced version of that compared to what other businesses are doing. And so... Um, and sometimes the best way to do it, I, it's, it's, for example, when I write it down, book funnel, all one word, when I look at these, these all look legit. Like, uh, but see, this one is not, not that it's not legit. Uh, it's not for our industry. This one right here. Any, like I know from, from the face, this guy's from, uh, the, that guy's from click funnels. And, and so Another way to kind of protect yourself from seeing information that's not relevant to what you want, you might you might want to use one of these things like um, reader magnet. That's probably best. Book funnel reader magnet. Because now what we're looking at are things that are specific to our genre. Okay? And again, these are things that someone who just starts and hears about book funnels 
would have no idea that there's such a difference and a nuance. And so that's why I'm bringing that's why I'm bringing this to light. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully this was helpful. If it was, give it a like. If you know someone that might benefit from this, give it a share. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. Until next time, this has been Josh Coker, a.k.a. Josh Miss Prime. Take it easy.